in class, I was showing how we can generate uh, histograms in Excel. Um, we generated a set of 200 random numbers down column A, and these numbers are uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. And to generate a histogram, we set ourselves up some bins. So the first bin goes from 0 to 0 0.1, the second bin goes from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 and so on. So we had these bins right here and what we wanted to do was count how many of these numbers fall in each bin. And then we do that and we use the data analysis tool in Excel which is an add-on. Uh, and so um, if we click under data here and the data analysis tools we had, we had loaded two add-ons, Data Analysis and Solver. And Data Analysis is right here. And then these are all sort of pre-programmed add-ins to Excel. And one of those add-ins is Histogram, and that's what we used. I'm not here to explain how to do that, okay? Uh, what I observation I've made is when we did this, we uh, So we generated the random numbers, we generated the bins, and then we uh, produced, uh, we counted using, ex using histogram how many random numbers fell into each bin. Then after we generated this, we produced uh, a histogram plot of, uh, uh, of these numbers, a chart just of these numbers. Then uh, I generated a new set of random numbers and did the same thing and generated a different chart over here. Now one of the things that you notice, which might be a disadvantage, that you a property you don't like, is that when I generate a new set of random numbers, uh, the data for the histogram doesn't change and the chart doesn't change. So I might want to generate another set of random numbers and see what happens. Right? Or on any chart, I might want to just change the data and see what happens. So let me show you that I can change these set of random numbers, but the charts don't change. So usually the way I do that, it's kind of easy for me, is I just click on a cell and I type a, a number, any number. There I type 1. Now when I hit return, you'll watch, you'll see all of these random numbers change. Excel generates a new set of 200 random numbers. So watching those numbers in that column, I hit return and all the data changes. I get another set of random numbers. But you may have noticed that none of this changes here. That once I've generated the histogram for one set of random numbers, the data in the chart doesn't change. Let me do it again. I type in a 1 here. Now generate a new set of data. When I hit return, and notice these things don't change. There doesn't change. So how can I generate a histogram chart where in fact generating a new set of random data will cause the histogram chart to change? So to do that I use the built-in frequency function in Excel. So that's not an add-on. When I use the add-on it doesn't change. But when I use the built-in frequency function it does change. So let's see how we do that. Okay, first of all, what I want to do, just, uh, just for ease of explaining things, I'm going to copy the, all these bins, and I'm going to move them next to where I want to put my new chart. So I select that, the, that section of column C, copy it. Now I'll come down here, and let's say right here, I'll paste. Now I have my new bins. Okay, now I want to generate... Uh, find out all the numbers that fall into each of these bins, just like before. Uh, so do, to do that, I'm going to type here, uh, select there, I'm going to type the word frequency, because I'm using the frequency function, and you can think of a histogram anyway as uh, counting the frequency of occurrences. Now I want to select every, this, all the cells in this column between there and there. Okay, so these are all the, all the cells next to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And I want to count the number of random numbers on the left here that fall into each of these cells. So 
Now, after I've selected this, I don't click on anything else. I just type equals frequency. So equal F, I start typing frequency, and frequency appears right off because I've re recently used it. So I type that. They now they want me to tell frequency where the data is and then where the bins are. Well, the data are all of these numbers all the way over here. So I select that and I go down to the bottom here and I select the bottom. Somehow that hasn't worked. Let me try it again. I select the bottom. Oh, there it worked. Okay. So now it's grabbed all of those numbers and those are the, the that's the first set of data in frequency. Now I have to tell frequency where the bins are. So the next thing is the bin array. That's what I'm going to want to put down here. Now I'll put a comma here, comma, and then I select the bin array, which is this array right here. So I select this, and then come down here, hold shift key, select that. And now, normally when I put a function into a cell, all I do is hit return, and then that function uh, works in the cell, is computed in the cell. But the frequency function is, is, is what they call an array function in Excel. So instead of just hitting return, I actually have to do control, shift, and then return. And when I do that, it puts the numbers in here. If I don't do control, shift, and I hit return, it, uh, it, it doesn't work right. So this is what I have to do. Now, I now have my bins and my frequency, and I want it to have these two sets of, of numbers adjacent to one another. Now what happens when I generate a new set of random numbers? So I'll just go over here, click there, type 1. When I hit return, you'll see that these numbers change, but then these numbers also change. So watch, I hit return. So the data changes now when I, when I put in uh, when I when I generate the bin frequencies change when I change the data. Now I want to graph these things. So to graph them, I uh, on a bar chart I'll select both columns, bins frequency columns. Then I go up to insert here, and then I see where it says recommended charts. So I'll click on that. This is what I want. So I click on that. So here is my new histogram. Okay, so these are the frequency numbers right in here, and these are the bin numbers right in there. So I might relabel this uh, histogram. Oh, I don't want that. Let me here. His, oh God, I'll get it right sometime. Histo, move that. Histogram from frequencies. There. And then one one last final thing I want to mention here. Somehow that just moved over on me. There. Hist and now um, one other thing. Notice these two charts have different widths on the on the bars. And I can change that. In fact, you, my default operation is when I, I want to change something but I'm not quite sure how to do it, I right click on the element and my options of how to change it will appear. So I will right click on a bar and it says format data series and that's what I'm going to pick. Now watch. Uh, and now I have gap width and that's the gap between the columns. And I can bring that all the way down to zero if I want. Okay. So um, so there's my gap width. I can change that. And then notice I also had an option of doing changes with other things. I right click here. I can uh, add data labels and do all sorts of things. Add a trend line, but it, it won't be much of a trend line here. So that's how I generate uh, a histogram using the frequency function in Excel where the histogram actually changes when I generate new data. So let me show you how to do that. Here, I've selected that cell. I'm going to type a number in there, hit return, and the data changes, and the histogram 
changes with the data. I'll do it again. Hit return. So you can see that. Uh, so that's it. That's how we generate a histogram uh, where the chart changes when we change the data.